Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some rather impressive optimizations we've seen to the GPU emulation that takes place in Yuzu, this Nintendo Switch emulator. So for many of you who aren't active either on my Discord or on the official Yuzu Discord, you are more than likely not aware of the fact that patrons who support the development of this emulator get at least one or two to three day early access to some builds that show off some brand new and up and coming fixes, which I guess you would say are like an alpha or beta state of something that is going to get merged into Yuzu Canary at some point in the very very near future. This build I'm looking at right now is one such version of those Patreon builds and it has shown us absolutely incredible performance gains over anything we've seen before on a Yuzu emulator. Now if you yourself want to get access to these builds and support for them, all you have to do is support Yuzu emulator, you'll find a link to their Patreon down in the description of this video, or due to the open source nature of this emulator, if you yourself want access to this Patreon exclusive build, you can simply ask me for a copy of it over on my own specific Discord. Again you'll find links for that down in the description of this video. Now onto the most important point of this video, the performance gains we are seeing in this brand new version. You can see right here I am at the very opening part of Super Mario Odyssey inside of Cap Kingdom where usually performance would be absolutely abominable. Upon loading into this area, the very first area of the game, most people would have expected to see around 25 to 35 frames per second, whereas once we build our shaders, you can see I am getting much, much closer to around 54, 55 and 60 frames per second a lot of the time. Now from time to time, I'm going to be swapping over to the latest Canary version. I'm going to be doing this so that I can show you guys exactly how much our performance has improved when using this brand new optimization to the asynchronous GPU implementation of Yuzu emulator. To give you the TLDR version of what asynchronous GPU emulation is, it basically allows Yuzu emulator to use two cores or threads out of your CPU as opposed to what it previously used one single core or thread. While asynchronous GPU emulation has been a part of Yuzu emulator for about 4 or 5 weeks now, many of the people who have experience with using it know it is slightly buggy in its current implementation. Thanks to this optimization, as well as a complete rewriting of Yuzu's GPU virtual memory manager and the updating of the rasterizer cache mechanisms within Yuzu emulator, we are seeing all of these performance optimizations we're going to be taking a look at in this video. To show you guys just how much performance has improved, I'm going to be comparing this Patreon build in this exact area right here in Cap Kingdom, a very, very demanding area in post Bowser Super Mario Odyssey, where you're seeing right now I'm getting around 50 frames per second and 50 FPS is pretty much the lowest my frame rate is going to drop in this very, very demanding area. Now in some other people's videos you would see them just posting screenshots of looking at one specific area where they would be getting 50 or 60 frames per second, but as you can very, very clearly see, regardless of what action I do or what direction I'm facing, I'm not going to be dropping below this 50 frames per second mark. Next I'm going to bring in some gameplay footage of Super Mario Odyssey in the exact same location at the exact same point in time, so it's pre-Bowser Cap Kingdom and you can see just how much of a difference there is between the performance levels in this Patreon preview build and the latest Yuzu Canary version. Now I also want you to bear in mind that for all of this gameplay you're seeing in this video, I had my performance capped to 100% speed and had I uncapped it in that previous Patreon release version that I showed you, my FPS when it was being locked to 60 frames per second would have been pushing well up into the 70s and high 80s. Now I want you guys to bear in mind that this Patreon release and this latest canary which we're taking a look at right now have every single one of the graphical enhancements and optimizations we've seen take place in Yuzu over the past few months, yet this brand new asynchronous GPU emulation update in the Patreon release is absolutely kicking canaries ass. For any of you guys who want an even more detailed explanation of exactly what the optimizations in this new Patreon preview are and what these changes are going to be once they're merged to Canary, you can find them in a much more detailed form down in the description of this video. For now however, let's continue with our game testing. Next up, I want to show you the performance difference in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, yet another one of the most popular games on the Nintendo Switch platform, where right here in Canary 1986, you can see that 
that with all of the optimizations to both the terrain, the physics rendering, and pretty much all of the lighting being fixed, we are still only able to run at around 6, 7, or 8 frames per second, depending on what area of the game we are in. And as you can very clearly see, we are currently just beside the Temple of Time on the Great Plateau. Now prepare to have your mind absolutely blown. In this Patreon preview version, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has seen a performance increase and performance jump of around 3 to 400% where previously we were only able to get 6, 7 or 8 frames per second, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild now runs at anywhere from around 21 to around 35 frames per second area dependent. Now, as most of you guys know who have watched this channel for any amount of time, Breath of the Wild is one of my favourite games ever, and to have it in pretty much a what I would consider a playable state on yet another emulator, this time for the Nintendo Switch is absolutely awesome. Now, aside from the performance levels of Breath of the Wild, at least the only thing stopping it from being playable, at least in my own eyes, is the fact that, unfortunately, audio is still only played back at 100% or 1x speed when the game itself is running at 60 frames per second, and until they can fix that issue along with boosting the performance even more, you would still have to say that the best place to play Breath of the Wild, at least right now, is still on CMU, an emulator for the Wii U platform. Platform. Thankfully, all of you guys have an awesome guide that shows you how to set up that emulator, so we have absolutely no need to worry. Okay, so enough about CMU Emulator, let's move back and take a look at even more performance optimizations taking place in this Patreon preview. So ARMS is yet another Nintendo Switch exclusive that you would have seen me cover quite a lot on the channel, and while many of its single player and single occupancy modes have been running at basically 60 frames per second for quite a long time, many of its multiplayer modes, for example 2 player or the 1 vs 100 game mode, has been struggling quite a bit for performance, even through all of the optimizations we've seen in the past. In this gameplay footage you see right here, this is the aforementioned 1 versus 100 game mode where you can see our frame rate is dipping down to around 38 to 40 frames per second sometimes dropping as low as 30 fps while many people would consider this playable or at least semi playable the fact that it's not running at 60 frames per second means that for one it's quite hard to dodge some of the faster enemies in the game and two the audio is going to be out of sync due to as we saw in the legend of zelda breath of the wild the game not playing back at 60 60 FPS. Do not worry though, let's take a quick look at this brand new Patreon preview where once again we have seen a ginormous performance boost in comparison to the previous latest Canary version where we saw drops down to 30, 35 and generally stayed in and around 40 to 45 frames per second in this brand new Patreon preview regardless of what arena we play in, regardless of how many players are in said arena, we are almost perfectly locked to 60 frames per second at all times, barring a few moments of shader related stutter. And in relation to how the audio in this game sounds, take a listen for yourself. Now obviously it's still not perfect and as I said we still do get a few moments of stutter here and there but it is a damn sight better than anything we've ever seen especially so in any of these large player modes including 2, 3, 4 player, multiplayer or this 1 versus 100 game mode. As I said pretty much every single game has seen a performance uplift in this brand new Patreon preview. Kirby Star Allies is just one more to add to the list of games that have moved from running at around 30 to 40 frames per second to a very very close to 60 frames per second value. Obviously this game in comparison to the last few we took a look at does have some graphical issues but at least from a performance perspective it can be considered very very playable at this point in time. 
On top of all these performance increases we've seen with asynchronous GPU emulation, many games that previously weren't running very well at all when using this async mode have now seen their regressions completely fixed. One for example is Grim Fandango Remastered, a game which is among one of my favourite classic games to get released on the Nintendo Switch, and as you can see, all of its features including swapping from its original mode to its remastered graphical mode are now fully working, and this game can also also be considered fully playable on Yuzu emulator. While yes the performance has greatly improved in Super Mario Odyssey and many other games, that's not to say that we haven't seen some slight regressions you could say in gameplay at least. You can see right here when transitioning at least from some areas, it doesn't happen every time you move from one area to the other, but from time to time when you swap from one area into the next, your graphical output can sometimes get distorted or kind of broken I guess you could say like this. Therein lies exactly one of the reasons for releasing these preview builds. For one thing, it gets many more people involved in the bug testing and bug hunting of these brand new features, and two, gives said users and said supporters of Yuzu's Patreon a nice little sneak peek at what the developers of this emulator are working on behind the scenes. So to summarize what we've seen in the last two Patreon releases within the last 28 days alone, we've seen our games improve in performance from anywhere between around 50 and 400% depending on the game obviously. We've seen The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild alone get its lighting, graphics, terrain rendering, physics, and when you pair all of this with the aforementioned performance increases that have almost brought this game within a hair's breadth of being at full speed and perfectly rendered rendered, there is really no reason why you shouldn't support these guys. If you wish to do so, please, please head over to the Patreon link down in the description of this video and help them with your support in any way you possibly can. As I said, all the features present in this Patreon preview are in their alpha and beta stages, so once they get delivered and released into Yuzu's Canary version, we'll be able to fully take a look at them and see exactly how they are running. Finally, in this performance review, let's take a look at Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, where once again, as with all of the other games we've taken a look at, this game has also seen a substantial performance increase. You can see that it is running well over two times game speed, and if you enter inside any houses or dungeons, you are going to see that it is running well over 4 to 5 times its intended game speed. Once this game has any and all of its softlock issues fixed, along with any and all of the audio rendering speed issues we have already covered in this video, it's going to be in a damn fine place in respect to playability. Once any and all of these issues are fixed or solved, I will be sure to let you guys know as soon as possible. For now, that's it for this video. As always guys, cheers for checking it out, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.